said, boom. Yeah, this your boy, F-E-D. Hey, man, hashtag family first. World news. This is just the beginning, nigga. Part one. Nigga, you done uprooted my family on some fuck shit. Fuck your Facebook receipts, nigga. This the tool, nigga. I mean, of the Kai Nation. Power to the people. Power to our people. Respect our people. First, I want to start off with this shit. It's not a fucking game. This shit, I do not fucking play around with. I got five sisters. One, two, three, four, five. Five sisters. So, this brother y'all seen me build with, this brother that, one, I paid to bring down here. Two, I'm trying to help reform his life from being a criminal, an ex-con, and a brother that all he had to do was either work the business we created for him or get a job. Because of the stress of being a man, he gets into it with his woman and decides to put his fucking hands on her. She calls me, crying, saying, come save me, come help me. She locked herself in a bathroom at a Walmart and waited for an hour there for me to drive from another county to where he is in a house, a beautiful house that y'all seen me build and develop and put up, and he's in. And when I tell him, I'm here, come talk to me, tell me what happened, he starts yelling and cussing talking about how it's, it's not his fault that he put his hands on the woman. It's about how his crackhead mama this and how he was raised like this and then nobody give a shit about him in life. Mind you, I've been taking care of this dude with my money for the last three, four, five, six months. And then when I tell him to come talk to me like a man and tell me what happened, I don't want to hear a second story. I don't want to hear none of this shit. After he, I asked him, did you put your hands on this woman? He was like, yeah, dog, we had a falling out. So I'm saying, yeah, I put my hands on her. But, you know, man, fuck it all. I don't even want to be on the planet no more. I don't even want to be on the world no more. Then hangs up like he about to go kill himself. And I'm saying, man, come down. Where you at? Oh, I'm down the street, man. And I just had a falling out with her. And I said, well, she's scared. She don't want to see you. And she's terrified right now. And you sit here every day making videos every fucking day about helping the queens. And all I talk about is helping the queens, doing all this, and building up the community. I got one, two, three, four, five sisters. And a mother that went through shit like this her whole fucking life. I don't play about that shit. I don't play about that shit. So when I found out he put his hands on one of the queens that I introduced him with because I'm taking care of this grown ass fucking man. I'm teaching him how to be a man. I'm teaching him business. I'm teaching him the things in life so he doesn't have to be a scumbag fucking criminal. And I'm going to put, the, I'm literally going to screenshot the conversation we had about how he just didn't want to go get a fucking job because he couldn't figure out how to run his own business that we created for him. And rather than just run a business and be a fucking man. He wants to literally get in arguments and put his hands on a queen. And then when we confront him, he wants to act like I'm just going to go kill myself because you put your hands on somebody. You want to think that it's cool to joke about killing yourself. Well, I got a message of news for all of you motherfuckers. My father actually killed himself. So I'm not the motherfucker to play with that you gonna kill yourself shit. When you live with somebody that actually committed suicide and you can tell the difference between a bitch ass cry for help and then you can tell the difference between a bitch ass man that won't just stand in the front yard man to man and man up and y'all know what I'm talking about and catch what he deserves for what he did and then get put on his way and you see that this dude starts acting like a child so I'm leaving him alone, letting him do his whole little, I'm about to kill myself because I, oh, my mama did this to me. She smoked crack and sold me for a couple of diapers when I was little. And, and it's not my fault that nobody cared about me. And my mama told me to go hustle and sell myself and, and blah, 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 and all this shit so that I can get her crack and everything. And I never even got to finish school. There is no excuse in your fucking life to put your hands on another black sister, another queen, another nothing. 
There is no stress in your life so much so that you have to put your hands on another sister rather than walk away. Now, one, she wasn't even instigating a fucking fight. It's not like she was standing in his way trying to block him from nothing. This motherfucker instigated the fight, then put his fucking hands on her. And the queen is so good that she don't even want to fucking press charges on this bitch ass motherfucker. And then he going to try and play her like, oh, I'm going to kill myself and I'm going to run out here and act like a bitch on Facebook. So since he wants to kill himself, he wants to do all this. I'm tough and won't come just man up and see me. I'm sitting in his room and on the couch waiting for him to come to his front door, sitting on the porch. And he's going to sit here, put his fucking hands on the queen when I'm taking care of his ass. Bought him all his clothes, paying for his fucking food, made his business for him. And he couldn't take the stress of being a business owner and a black man. He couldn't take the stress of just being a decent fucking person. So he thought that the way to relieve his stress was put his hands on the queen that we set up for him. We literally gave them a house, let them have everything that they fucking need. And then at the top of all this shit, because he didn't either want to run a business or go get a fucking job. When I say come man up and see me in the front yard because she don't want to call the police because I was an hour away. So trust me, before I get here, she definitely could have called the law and put his dumb ass in fucking jail. But because she's such a good fucking person, she didn't even want to fucking call the fucking law on his ass. She just wanted me to come throw his ass on the bus and send him wherever the fuck he came from. Now, what really pisses me off is that about 12 o'clock at night, I see this motherfucker deleting shit from the carnation pages and playing with the way that we actually make money that the investment groups that we actually help people with the investment opportunities that we actually help people build with so not only is this motherfucking beating on women he playing with my motherfucking time he's playing with my efforts and my life work after i took care of his fucking ass it's shit like that that makes me say fuck everything because after you put your fucking hands on one of my sisters and then you act like an insecure little bitch ass motherfucker and blame your crackhead ass mama on your fucking life because she sold you into prostitution and, and she told you your life wasn't worth shit and she made you suck dick for crack or whatever the fuck she did. When you was fucking little, ain't no goddamn excuse for you as a grown ass fucking man at fucking 40 to fucking put your hands on no goddamn woman. And at the end of the day, when somebody tells you, man up and catch what you deserve for that shit, and I'm telling you, I don't care who you are, I will knock on your front door like you ordered me. I'm a motherfucking pizza, and I will be at your front fucking door. So while you crying, all this suicidal, now you running around Birmingham about to kill yourself, and, and you want to get the fuck up out of life, and life ain't worth it. I will literally make this live video for all your little funk phony ass friends so they can call Facebook and they can call the Birmingham Police Department. So if y'all are concerned about this fake phony and this all uh, suicidal attempt, because I don't believe it. So I don't feel obligated to feel that it's the truth to call the police. But y'all should call the police on that brother. Y'all should y'all should find the closest EMT that he needs to fucking talk to so he can spend that 72 hour hold in that mental facility. Don't wear for doors. Don't wear for doors. Remember that. Remember that. Uh, I was at his house, making a attempt to be 
able to reach me. Now, as far as with Carnation, you very seldomly heard me even mention Carnation, even though I was staying with these people, because I knew that Carnation was flawed, and I was like, he got all this land, these cars, these Carnation. You very seldomly heard me even mention Carnation, even though I was staying with these people, because I knew that Carnation. You very seldomly heard me even mention Carnation, even though I was staying with these people, because I knew. Carnation was flawed, and I knew that it was fraud, and I knew that people would most definitely find about it one day. So the people that's on my friends that I seen on this posted something, Kendall, whatever his name is, they talking about he calling all the revolutionaries together, and if you see this dude, do this and do that and all that, this one. Right. Bad boys move in silence. God's moving silence. King's moving silence. You know, <laughs> it's 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 you know, so it's somebody, this man, this man that came, this little way of hopes, talking about my mama is a crackhead and all this sort of other stuff. And then I was out in the streets, prostituting to get money, to get crack, to get my mama. Shout out to God, the Carolina slave. Exactly, you know, exactly, Asia. Right now, make sure that they tune in. So that you know, uh, you can get that verified and clear up about me. And uh, one thing I will say, you know what I'm saying, about the whole equation is as far as my prior history, my life, what I went through, that has absolutely nothing to do with the person that I am today. Uh, it's changed all the silence. You don't have to make no public statement about what you're going to do or how you're going to do something to somebody. This man, this man came. This little way of hoes talking about my mama is a crackhead and all this sort of other stuff. And then I was out in the streets prostituting to get money, to get crack, to get my mama. Shout out to God, the Carolina slave was on my friend list. Let me get both of them up right now and make sure that they tune in so that you know uh, you can get that verified and cleared up about me. And uh, one thing I will say, you know what I'm saying, about the whole equation is as far as my prior history, my life, what I went through, that has absolutely nothing to do with the person that I am today. You feel me? So I could care less about what a person could say and about how they could try and manipulate people into believing that he actually helped me out with doing something. You feel me? Rather than I'm the one that's doing the majority of the footwork, making memes, making wrongs, writing articles and things in this nation. Inviting each and every one of you to his live videos, sharing them in groups. If I was such a bad person, if I was such a lame, if I was such a person that he felt as if he had to make a live video on and disrespect me and disrespect my brother, if I was that person, then why would he have helped me in the beginning? See, this is the hook line of the singer. The reason why he wanted me to come to Alabama, he's seen my Facebook trailers, right? But hey, this is the even bigger thing. Whoa, this is the bigger thing. Look. I didn't even know this dude. This dude's wife inboxed me and told me to watch his video. After I watched the video or whatever, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, you know, sound all right, whatnot, kind of believe or whatnot. So I got in somewhere of a jam in my hometown, and I came here to Alabama. When I got here, everything, and I do mean everything, that he promised that he would have, and what he would have in store for me once I got here was a complete lie. Elisha Dean, I say, listen, I don't even have a reason to lie. Why do I got a reason to lie? Am I in your inbox asking you for money? Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Let's recant. In that video, was I talking about his mama? Mm-hmm. Why? Because he blamed his mama on putting his hands on that woman. He said because of what his mama put him through, that's why he put his hands on that woman. That was 26 hours ago. We ain't talking about what his past and who he was didn't make him who he is. He said, I put my hands on that woman because I had a real childhood with my mama. My mama was a crackhead. But 
He just said in a sentence, his mama wasn't no crackhead. You can ask two brothers on his post that blah, blah, blah. You can hit them up. However, I want y'all to know I don't never lie on nobody. I just tell it like it is. There is Donna Freeman TL. Wow. You told us about your mother yourself. So, exactly. If you told us your mama was a fiend and your mama put you on the street and your mama told you to go hustle, sell dope, and prostitute yourself so that you can make a living and that's why you dropped out of school and that's how you turned out how you turned out. When I tell it back to you, I'm just repeating what you said. But there is no way in shape, form, hell, or fashion on this planet on this whole planet to ever blame what your parents put you through to put your hands on another black woman. Now, somebody even told me in between this while I was doing my thing that they believed that he didn't put his hands on that girl. He didn't do it, okay? He didn't do it. Well, let's listen to him self-confess. Like I said, if I was a cop, he would go to jail. He would get a domestic violence charge. This is what happened. This woman. This is what happened. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm skipping ahead. I'm skipping ahead. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm skipping ahead. He right now is talking about he ain't never been in nobody's inbox asking for money. That's what he just said. Let me rewind that because I skipped ahead. He ain't even about to go self confess yet. This is him saying he ain't never asked nobody for no money. Let's let's look at him. So let's go to this screenshot of this pool in somebody's inbox asking them for money. Let's just get that out of the way real, real quick. Let's 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 do that. The last person I sent this message to, uh, do 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 do. Let's go. Let's go to this chick named Tiffany Wall because uh, she she the one on these comments talking all this whoop la and talking all this whatever. So let's find her. I'm gonna use her as a shining example. Uh, and I'm going to go on and put these little screenshots of him. Good Lord, did I ever talk to the woman? Jesus. No, that's not. There she go. Booyah. All right. Let's pop this open right here. And let's pull this screenshot up. Now, I actually, through all of this, it was more interesting because when um, I found out what he was doing, because I had, I, obviously, I wouldn't know if he's inboxing somebody. That's his. His inbox is his business. But um, here goes the inbox. And actually, the queen that he actually asked for the money is actually on this live video right now. So I'm not going to say nothing about that. But here go his little inbox of him using the sister that he put his hands on kids as a come up. Now, you see this? You see this right here? This is him. That's Antron. That's Antron Watson. I need to make a trip to take the kids back to Tuscaloosa from Birmingham. I hate to ask, but would you have close to, if not, $20? He got them boys out there stealing stereos for $20. <laughs> Man, I think we found the leader of the 11th floor. You dig? The truth don't need no help. And I will be back with plenty of more evidence on this fraud-ass nigga. 1,000. Boom!